Okay, the other day I showed you, uh, we went over a law that I introduced to you, and it was called uh, Ohm's Law. And today I'm going to finish up, this is a video that kind of finishes up with that and the introduction I just did with the scientific notation into our studies of electronics and the manipulation of electronic flow in a DC circuit. Now what we're going to go on to with today is we're going to review uh, of the law that we went over and we're going to introduce some other points of this law and the importance of those and, and the, uh, so you get a better understanding and if you wish you can you can take a uh, still photo of these pages as I turn them and you can put them in your notes if you desire or make a copy of this video and uh, whatever you want to do with it. Okay, <clears throat> the electronic laws. We're going to first talk about the law of charges. The law of charges states, one characteristic of electrical charges is that like charges repel and unlike charges attract. And in a DC circuit, you will always have one voltage leaving negative and going into another component positive. You will never see it different. That is just how it is. You know that in magnetism that the north pole of either uh, magnet, if you try to put two north poles together, they will oppose each other. Electrical force is the same way. You cannot have a two positives attack, attached to each other. It always has to be a positive to a negative or a negative to a positive, and that's just how it is. Okay, now we're not going to get into the law of rings. But what law of rings is talking about, it's talking about the uh, balance rings that go around the electron and why electricity flows the way it does and how it why it flows in better in in other components better than others for instance electricity will flow in gold better or has uh, less resistance in gold than it does in copper and that is due to the valence ring or the outer ring and how many electrons are in it and we'll we'll get into that later on but that's uh, something we don't, don't we want to avoid right now we're just talking about the laws right now, but the law of rings, there is a law that governs those, those rings. There seems to be a law that governs all things of physics, and you'll see that as we get further into our study of electronics. Now, the uh, next law that we want to discuss, and we've already actually seen the example of it in the first video and on the board in Kirchhoff's law, and that is that Kirchhoff's law states that in any closed series circuit the sum of the voltage drops will be equal to zero and what that means is is that if I have 12 volts leaving the battery going into a closed DC circuit that once it goes across all the voltage or all the resistances in my circuit that voltage returning back to my to the uh, negative side of the battery should be equal to the voltage that left. So if the voltage drops across the components is equal to 12 volts, that means that at the negative side or the side coming back to the uh, closed circuit should be zero. If 12 left, 12 was consumed, what should be returned on the other side should be zero. And that is Kirchhoff's law. An example of that is, is down below. You can see the math in the equation there. Note these laws and their variations are expressed further in the study guide. We will be going over these over and over and over. Now let's go to the next page of what I have listed here. In electronics laws, the other law that we will be looking at in the future is going to be the, the Lenz law. We won't be discussing it today, but I will just mention it. And that is the polarity of the voltage induced in a coil depends on the direction of the flux and whether the flux linkages are increasing or decreasing. And that will be studied in our study of magnetism and magnetic force and how magnetism used in electronic circuits controls and increases the amperage and flow of electricity and also manipulates it. It can be used um, to convert from AC to DC and all sorts of things. But right now we'll just know that these laws will get more in-depth and complicated as time goes by. Um, the next thing I do want to be introducing to you, you've already seen it, we talked about voltage, current, and resistance in the DC circuit. Uh, so this is something we're, we're going to discuss now, we're going to just go over uh, what I have written in my notes. I want you to get a, a good shot of these, uh, maybe take a picture of them. If you don't have any of these notes in, your, in any of your uh, library, then you can go ahead and, and get a picture of it now. Voltage. Explain. Voltage is the electrical pressure or force that sets electrons in motion. 
A DC voltage is one that causes a direct current to flow. With one side of the voltage source connected to the ground, DC voltage measurements are made between the ground and the points in the circuit. This is a convenient method of reading voltages found in various parts of the circuit. To simplify the wiring of most electronic equipment, a common terminal of power source is, is frequently used as a reference point and is most frequently called ground or sometimes a common ground. At the ground point, the voltage is considered to, to be zero because it is used as a reference value. When you read that, that some circuit point is at ground potential, it means that the voltage at that point is zero volts with respect to the common ground. Usually the negative terminal of the battery or the battery supply is connected to the common ground terminal. When connected in this way, it is, it is regarded as the zero reference point for, or, the, or the ground for the voltage in the equipment circuits. That's why when you get ready to go attach something to it, uh, to an engine, you will put your wire on it and you will touch it to a point where you know there should be a good ground and the light should not come on. If the light comes on, if you touch a common ground and you touch it to a motor where there should be a ground and you get a light come on, that means that your ground is broken to that to that point and it should be checked. Anyway, we'll get into that later. In the study of electronics, you will run into a lot of equipment where voltages may be either negative or positive with respect to the ground. A DC voltage produced by a battery or AC or a, or a DC or a DC generator will have a polarity that does not change. Connected to a circuit, a DC voltage source produces a current that flows in one direction. Voltage sources are frequently connected to common points called ground and may be either positive or negative with respect to the ground. Batteries and generators can be connected in series aiding so that their voltages and add or in series opposing so that their voltages subtract. When voltage sources are connected in series between ground and another point, the polarity of the point may be positive or negative when the batteries oppose, depending on the polarity of the larger voltage source. An example of these connections is on the following page. Now, this is a little more than what you're going to be able to understand now, but as time goes by, you will be able to grasp it but this page right here I do want you to please copy and then go back over this material read it and read it and read it and then research the questions that you come up with if you find it necessary to do so or to help you understand if you decide to get into the electronic study this is introductory stuff believe me this is just the beginning of what you'll be getting into when connected to a circuit a DC voltage source causes current to flow in one direction Voltage sources use common points called grounds. A point in a circuit may be either positive or negative with respect to the ground. Batteries and generators connected in series aiding will add their voltage in series opposing their voltages subtract. Current flows in all parts of the circuit at the same instant when voltage is applied. Current voltage and resistance units may be conveniently expressed in smaller or larger units for ease of measurement. <clears throat> voltage is the electronic or electrical pressure or force that sets electrons in motion. A DC voltage is one that causes a direct current to flow. A series connection puts the negative terminal of one cell in contact with the positive terminal of another. Using the chassis as a common connection significantly reduces the amount of necessary wiring in electronic equipment. Most electronic equipment is made with printed circuit boards. So you understand that what I was trying to tell you on the board the other day, <coughs> these are all things that are common to the DC circuit. Remember, when we're speaking of DC circuit, we are talking of direct current. That means current that flows in one direction, not AC current. AC current is an alternating current and flows in both directions. So that's why we're always speaking, or these laws speaks of current flow and, and all in one direction is because we're speaking of direct current. <coughs> okay, now some voltage units that uh, you, will, you will see us or, or see a lot of when we're speaking of volts, it will be the volt, one volt abbreviated is the V, the mini volt or the MV, uh, one hundred or one thousandth of a volt to convert volt to a mini volt, multiply by one thousand. So in other words, 
one millivolt is one thousandth of a volt and uh, that's that's just how it is and if you can you can see how you what you need to do to convert when you want to understand the number better the volt the mini volt the micro volt and the kilo volt and here's the abbreviations for them so put that in your library and that that finishes our study on the uh, on the electronics tonight and that should help you out a little bit more with what we're getting ready to go through and what we have covered and uh, I'll give you an introduction into uh, what we're going to be getting into here a little bit further down the line. And uh, we get over to where we, we stopped the other day. We get into uh, the Ohm's Law and what we talked about there. And the different uh, forms of Ohm's Law and how to prove your, uh, prove your circuit and make sure your circuit is sound. And uh, one of the things that I did want to say is... Um, we want to make sure and remember that when we're looking at uh, at a series circuit, we're looking at what's called a voltage divider. Remember, the current never changes. The current never changes in the uh, in the DC circuit, the series circuit. It never changes. But what does change, or what can change, uh, the uh, current flow will be either a change in the resistance or a change in the voltage. The voltage becomes a voltage and and the the series circuit becomes a voltage divider because each time the voltage goes across a resistor that's working properly or not if it's but if it's if it's not shorted out it's working properly you're going to have a voltage drop and at the end of the series circuit when those voltage drops are added up they have to come equal to zero in other words they have to be equal to the amount that was put into it and went through the circuit okay so um <coughs> Just again, this is a, a coverage of the law that we have we have been talking about today, and uh, some of the things that the series circuit does. We'll be posting more of these as we go through time. Here, we're going to get a full and deep understanding of the series circuit. But for, for now, I want you to go over the scientific notation that we talked about, and then in the uh, near future, we'll be introducing some more of the. Uh, parts of a series circuit and make it a little more complicated in the math and we'll get into figuring out some of those bigger number with exponents once we uh, you get a good understanding of the scientific notation I'm going to inter be introducing in the near future here how to use a scientific calculator to help you uh, with some of your your uh, figure out some of your math you know so uh, just hang in there and, and just uh, keep coming back for more, okay? All right, thank you so much. And uh, don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video and, uh, and give us a comment or a discussion or a question in the discussion part of the, uh, at the end of the video. Thank you so much. Bye now. GoPro, stop recording.